and I've said this a hundred times, I'm going to say it again, but I don't think anybody should ever feel bad about supporting someone who they believe to be in need. I think who deserves to feel bad is the person who lied. And with all of that said, I don't feel like I could have just walked away from this situation and felt okay with knowing that I donated and that I also said, hey, I donate to this. Other people consider donating to help somebody in need without telling everybody the truth. ENG says, I feel so shitty about this. I was going to bat for her even last week. For okay. I'm going, to, I'm going to amend a little bit of what she said. You should not at all feel bad for supporting her, for being duped by her if you were, or if you did. But there are some people who should feel bad. Those people who uh, bullied other people for being skeptical, not the bad faith ones, but those people who bullied other people for even entertaining the idea that maybe Keffel's $100,000 ask was irresponsible or unjustified, those people should feel bad because you acted as a defense mechanism for a fraud. You made it so that if there was a fraud in your midst, you, you're, the people around you are socially punished for trying to look after each other. And that's extraordinarily dangerous. And the people who did that should absolutely feel bad. Don't beat yourself up over it, but don't do that again. Learn from it. People who were willing to defend her out of reflex, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I disagree. I, I actually will disagree with the mom on this. I think defending someone at, on reflex is a mistake in every single case. Um, if you know somebody and you have a special reason to trust their account, you can say, I know this person. This doesn't sound like them. I'm going to withhold judgment. I'm going to find out. But do not defend people out of reflex. Certainly don't defend people out of reflex that you only know through the internet. Don't defend me out of reflex. Don't defend Demon Mom out of reflex. Don't defend, certainly don't defend um, people who have a massive, like, huge monetary incentive um, in, in some kind of, like, some kind of accounting spun. Like, Keffels was not somebody who was asking for chump change to, uh, to replace a computer that broke. Okay, Xander Hall had a, had a fund, I think, at one point to replace a computer that broke or to make a small move, yeah? Um, Keffels asked for $100,000 and she used emotionality and she used her identity, i.e., she used everybody who shares her identity as a human shield in order to extract an extraordinary amount of money. Reflexively defending that is the, one of the most irresponsible things you can do. Because if that person is acting in a way that's irresponsible, you have made it so that there, now there is so much social pressure and social risk, and in many cases financial risk, for people to criticize that, that they just won't. Think about me, for example. I am fortunate in many regards that I don't have entanglements with Keffel's community at all. Like, all, all, practically none. I've got a little tiny bit with Demon Mama's community. Not, not a ton, but enough. But if I had more, if, say, for example, 50% of my audience were Keffel's fans, well, then me speaking out against Keffel's might mean sudden massive drop in my income, sudden massive drop in my viewership. It might mean, for example, the difference between right now, I'm in an okay spot. I'm in, like, I could be in a worse spot. I'm not in a great spot. Like, we're, we're stuck moving on very short notice. The market is terrible and so on and so forth. But it's a thing we can do. Um, it's more expensive because it's on short notice. We, like, we need help to, to, to pad it out because we're in short notice because it, life becomes very uncertain. But we can do it. If that had happened, I would be out of that situation. I would not be able to do it. Thank you very much. So this, this becomes like extraordinarily serious. Th these are not your friend groups. This is a racket. Every time Demon Mama covers your videos, President Sunday, some wiggaloids, wiggaloids, Christ, in her chat uh, would scoff at your presence. Good. Let them. Ulcer Spiv, thanks for the five dollars. The entire issue is why I listen and not believe. Hearing someone out is a whole lot different than dismissing, disbelieving outright. Am I right? Okay. 
Brief, uh, brief, very brief. Very brief, uh, detour on believing victims. Okay? This is what it means to believe victims and why you should believe victims and when you should believe victims. You'll notice that there's something of a contradiction in that language, right? Believe victims. Well, you only have to tell yourself to believe victims if you've already decided that the person is a victim. So the question is, when do you decide that a person is a victim? And it's very simple. If somebody comes to you and says a bad thing has happened to them and they ask for your help or for advice, you don't interrogate or, or, or be skeptical of that claim. You give them advice and you help them find the way to rectifying the problem or to getting somewhere safe. If someone says something in public and uses a claim of victimhood to extract money or goods or authority or to hurt somebody else, now you do not have the luxury of presuming their victimhood because they're not asking you for help. Your role in this case is not as a facilitator of justice and safety. Your role now is of a spectator. You are watching somebody else use a rhetorical move, and it is a rhetorical move, whether it's true or false, what their claim is, to secure some kind of good in the world, to secure some kind of outcome that they want. And by dint of that being the case, you already have an ulterior motive. So you do not have the luxury of taking that accusation as true out of hand. You don't assume it's false, but you do not reflexively jump to their defense. If it's somebody you trust, you support them in going through the proper channels, if they exist. If there are no proper channels. If you're in a state of anarchy, it's a different story. That's more complicated. But given that there are proper channels, you support them to that end. If the proper channels fail in some way that exposes their inadequacy, then again, you're in a more complicated space. But until such a time, until such a time, insofar as there are proper channels to go through, insofar as investigations have yet to be done, do not start swarming around them as a shield deterring people from scrutiny. Because here's the problem. If you do that and the person they're accusing is innocent, then you haven't actually believed the victim. You've believed the victimizer. That's a serious problem. And uh, it's a famous, famous case in literature. There, there are other cases uh, not in literature like this. There is one, for example, of uh, a little boy who was actually put on the electric chair. Um, but there's a famous literary case in uh, Tom Robinson from uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, and the premise is simply this. Because the person claiming victimhood in this case had a privileged social status vis-a-vis -vis the other person, the other person was condemned by the jury as guilty on poor evidence. Um, and of course, eventually Tom Robinson dies trying to escape because he's hopeless. Um, Keffels did this relatively recently. During the Xander Hall conversation, uh, during the Xander Hall kerfuffle, the debate with the, 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 uh, the beef with Xander Hall, um, Xander Hall mentioned to, as a jab at Keffels, that Keffels abandoned her partner, um, whose name was listed in the GoFundMe, uh, and left her effectively destitute. Keffels replied, how dare you, how dare you repeat the words of my abuser? And she had a whole stream called, I was raped. This had never come out before. Nobody had said anything about this before. Althea had previously accused Keffels of abuse and abandonment after taking all of that money. But now all of a sudden, all of a sudden, there is, it becomes opportune to make this accusation. Not against Althea, against Xander Hall. So now you've got a problem. What do you do? What do you do? You as a viewer don't know if she's telling the truth. I don't know that Keffels is telling the truth. Do you believe the victim? Well, that's not so easy. Althea's also claimed victimhood. 
And Keffels is using her claim of victimhood not to seek justice against her partner, but to get revenge on Xanderhal, to fight to, as a rhetorical tool against Xanderhal. So, what do you do? And the answer is nothing, because there's nothing you can do. What you do do is you pay attention, do not, do not clip that. You do not do do. What you, what you do, I can't think of an alternative word. What you do do, do do, I'm sorry, it is what it is. What you do do, stop laughing. You're making me a loop, stop laughing. Wait, were you laughing? No, you weren't. Okay, I'm just going crazy. That's all good. What you do instead, got it. I'm self-conscious now, so this is, this whole thing is just fucked. What you do instead, rather, is you pay attention and you referee the parties involved when they act in a way that either obscures investigation um, or, uh, or or otherwise breaks breaks ethical norms. And it's, it's, it's that simple. Um, but swarming around defending them, no, no, how dare you question Keffels? Keffels is a victim. You don't know. All you do know is that she is a specific use for that claim that is apart from its truth value. So, there it is. Well, you're laughing? Well, I'm happy for you, jerk. Again, part of the reason why I felt why both myself and Staroxvia and others, and members of Keffel's own team, felt pressured to come out and talk about this. We felt a responsibility, a moral and... Uh, and and uh, reputational and social responsibility, all of these things. Um, we felt these things because we know that the average person out there would correctly conclude, a reasonable person would be like, hey, this shit, they've been told that, of course. If you believe what you've been told, and a lot of this stuff has not been public stuff. It's been deception that has been kept from the eyes of the public. So all of us felt the need for everyone's purpose, for your own, for those of you out there who are saying, hey, I don't think it's reasonable the way that this person, that Keffels was treated. And you would be right to conclude that. But then it's another step to say, well, you know, now that I know these things, maybe it's not my responsibility to, to feel the need to, to defend someone who has not been honest with me. That was... That was a little bit uh, clumsy, and I apologize. The wording there didn't make all that much sense. I'm, I'm trying to, to, I'm trying to tie this off in a way that makes sense. But it's honestly, I feel very frustrated and disappointed.